Merci Monsieur l'Ambassadeur, Monsieur le Vice-Ministre, Messieurs les Ambassadeurs, Mesdames et Messieurs, bonjour. Nous sommes très heureux aujourd'hui de, de recevoir un panel aussi prestigieux pour notre première journée économique avec euh, la participation euh, du ministère du Plan et de l'Industrie et le concours financier de la délégation de l'Union Européenne de la hausse et de la Chambre euh, de Commerce Européenne. Donc le Laos à la croisée des chemins, c'est un colloque économique, propose trois journées distinctes euh, dans le temps, mais complémentaires dans l'analyse. Il ambitionne d'étudier, d'analyser les mutations rapides que connaît le Laos et les différentes politiques qui pourraient y être menées. La première journée, celle d'aujourd'hui, proposera un tour d'horizon des risques et des opportunités pour le Laos d'un développement basé sur un taux de croissance élevé des du revenu national. L'abondance des ressources garantit-elle le développement En octobre 2014, en fin d'année, la seconde journée, intitulée « Le tissu économique local, chez nos manquants du développement », sera intégrée dans un colloque scientifique que l'on mène chaque année avec le ministère de la Science et des Technologies, les journées de la recherche pour le développement. Enfin, en janvier 2015, la dernière journée se focalisera sur la relation entre niveau national et niveau régional dans le développement, des transformations de l'espace national à une intégration régionale. Ces différents rendez-vous scientifiques sont exposés brièvement dans la pochette qui vous a été remise à l'entrée. L'intégralité des débats, des conférences, des articles scientifiques en appui à cet événement sont téléchargeables sur le site culturetech.com, qui est la base, on va dire, débat d'idées de l'Institut français de Rouen. Pour la journée d'aujourd'hui, nous avons le grand plaisir de recevoir Minpan, M. Minpan, pardon, jeune retraité et ancien représentant du PNU, qui a accepté la lourde tâche d'être le modérateur de cette rencontre. Cher Min, je vous laisse présenter les invités décrire le contexte du débat, organiser dans un premier tour un panel d'intervention de 15 minutes par intervenant, puis ensuite organiser dans un second tour une discussion entre les panélistes pour enfin ouvrir ces questions à l'Assemblée. Bonne conférence. So you will have to uh, excuse my level of nervousness. Um, It is an honor and pleasure for me this afternoon to introduce someone who does not need any introduction, and that is Vice Minister Boutavi, um, and an economist uh, trained in France from Aix-en-Provence, uh, distinguished economist, but also distinguished uh, senior government official from the Ministry of Planning and Investment, uh, one of the key focal ministries um, that we have the opportunity and the pleasure to work with. To my left is Mr. Jean-Marc Chatelier, um, the Deputy Director General from the Global Affairs Development and Partnership uh, Department since 2012. Um, Jean-Marc has held very distinguished uh, positions in the past few years, particularly also uh, his post as ambassador uh, of France to Madagascar. He's also the author and co-author of many uh, very distinguished uh, publications as well. To Jean-Marc's left is Richard Brecker, uh, senior economist uh, at the World Bank. Uh, Richard has worked uh, in Laos over the last three years on trade issues, macroeconomic issues, um, and investment issues as well. He also had an extensive experience in East Africa and, um, and also in Vietnam. To my extreme right is Jean-Bernard de Milito, who is an economist from the EU, uh, Jean-Marc is uh, from Belgium. You have been with the EU over the last 16 years, and you have covered quite a wide uh, territory in terms of your work, ranging from Central 
Asia, North Korea, Middle East, and now Laos. Welcome to, to this panel. Let me use the few minutes I have to set the context of the discussion uh, today. I think the context of Laos is a remarkable one. Um, 30 years after the introduction of the economic reforms in the mid-80s, the economy has taken off quite at a fast clip. Not unlike some of the Asian tigers in the late 60s or early 70s. As a consequence of this growth, poverty, the poverty rate has plunged remarkably over the last uh, two decades or so. Social indicators, health, education also, by and large, have improved. More remarkably, gross national income per capita has increased fourfold from 310 in 1994 to now in 2012, 1270 US dollars. This growth has been fueled largely by foreign direct investment, most specifically in the natural resource sector, particularly hydropower, mining, and to some extent forestry. Additionally, Lao is well off, is well on its way. Can you hear me? Um, additionally, additionally, is well on its way to on its uh, integration effort accession to WTO in 2013 as well as the start of the opening of the ASEAN economic yeah. uh, community by 2015 all of which points to the decision point where Laos is right now on its graduation from the least developed country status by the year 2020. Indeed, a remarkable achievement over the last uh, 20 years or so. The question is for us, has this progress <coughs> been free of challenges? And the answer is a definite no, and a qualified no also in some of the issues. But let me point out perhaps a few challenges uh, in the context of this uh, long growth. One, the concern over the environmental degradation, particularly in the context of rapid foreign direct investment in the natural, in the, in the natural resource sector. The second concern that we have is about the growing disparity uh, between the urban areas and the rural areas the disparity between the formal sector and the informal sector. The third concern that we have is Lao is off track on the Millennium Development Goals, which ends next year on a number of indicators. Some of them are, one, a high rate of stunting or malnutrition, uh, two, a high dropout rate among primary schoolers, which leads to the creation of a large group of functional illiterates, if I may say so. The concern about maternal mater, mater, uh, mortality and also the presence, the continuing presence of the unexploded ordnance. Uh, clearly, we still have uh, two million tons of uh, unexploded ordnance over the last uh, uh, since then. And the last and fourth concern that we have is about the fiscal health of the country. Uh, the public, its public finance management, 
the budget deficit, the twin deficit, the trade deficit, and also the, the budget deficit. The, we will ask each of the panelists to focus on a specific issue. Um, we will ask Dr. Gunter V uh, to talk about the policy options, the policy choice in terms of the economic directions and the budgetary directions in the country at this uh, point. We will ask uh, Jean-Marc Chetenier to share with us his extensive comparative experience from Africa, especially in the context of country endowed with natural resources. We will ask Richard Rutger to talk about, to us about the risk and opportunities um, of an economy that is reliant on natural resources and the implications of that reliance. And lastly, we'll ask Jean-Marc, Jean-Bernard, to talk to us about the tension of the distribution of the wealth generated uh, by the exploitation of natural resources. Uh, at heart, uh, Jean Bernard will talk to us about the equity uh, issue in this country. Let me conclude by framing some of the critical issues uh, that we would like to address. And in your presentation, if you could address this for us. One, is will the current development model of this country, which is capital-intensive-led growth, will it lead to increased employment? One. Two, will it, increase, will it lead to higher income at the level of the households? And third, will it lead to an overall drop, a continuing drop, of the poverty rate that the country has experienced over the last uh, 20 years. Underlying that is, can this model be sustained over the long run? So that's the first set of issues. The second set of issue is the concern that we have whether Laos will become a rich country but with poor people. And this is the heart of the issue about the gap that we have raised earlier. The third issue is with its current public finance management, with its current fiscal health, the question is whether the country is poised to achieve its LDC graduation by 2020. And the last issue that I would like to frame is how does the current formulation of the National Development Plan, the next plan, which runs from 2016 to 2020, how does the formulation of the next plan, how will it incorporate some of the policy choices and some of the policy directions uh, that we have just mentioned? So today, this for this afternoon, we'll have three segments. Um, the first segment, I will ask each of the panelists to address the specific points which we have asked you to address. Uh, the second segment will be, an, will be an exchange among the four panelists, and that will last about half an hour. And the last section will open to your comments and questions uh, from the floor. Um, I will then summarize uh, the points that we covered during the two and a half hours. With that, um, may I ask Dr. Buntevi, you have the floor, sir. ขอบใจขอบใจครับขอบใจครับ